after uh, reviewing uh, the last game, just um, any thoughts or anything that sort of out at you? You know, just... Uh, You know, a couple, couple co coverages that we broke down on, and uh, you know they made shots off of them. And uh, you know, uh, I felt for the most part we had two turnovers late in the under like four thirty eight. Um, but for the most part, I felt like we got good shots. Moses got a good three in the corner. We got fouled. Uh, uh, I just think, you know, I'm a big believer. Like when we were up three, we couldn't give up a three pointer. There was a breakdown. We gave up a three to the tie. Um, you know, you're going to miss foul shots. Oh, you know, hopefully you make them all. But it's, you know, we. I think that we we missed two. Um, but you got to also tip your hats to to, you know, to Cal. They made a couple of tough shots. Well, one was very tough. Yeah. Any chance we see the starting line I don't think so. I've thought about it. I think it's, uh, you know, listen, whoever starts, it's more who's going to finish the game. And when you're playing 30 minutes a game, he's playing starter minutes. Um, I think knowing that you have somebody to come off the bench that can give you a, an offensive boost is a huge thing. You know, I, you know, there's different phases of the game and where, you know, he just gives you a shot of adrenaline which you need, uh, and that's his ability to score and make plays. But is a starter <laughs> in terms of his talent, for sure. You've talked about him working with Will, mm -hmm. you know, and getting that better. But I know that, you know, with the injury he had and just being kind of beat up, you know, there was times this season where his body language wasn't the greatest. Yeah, yeah. But his outlook seems he's almost got a little bit of swagger right now. I think, you know, any, you know, you get swagger by work. You know, you're putting in the time. And, uh, you know, he's, you know, Will's out there, you know, putting that, those blood, sweat, and tears with him. And he came in, and he, and he mean, Corn went through a period where he wasn't shooting the ball well up until that game. Um, the last two games, I think he's, you know, he's averaging, I think, 30 something minutes in those two games. Uh, you know, he had 30, he had 16, he shot over 50%. Um, I also, the one thing that he does is he makes others around him better, which I, you know, like when he's in not scoring Corin mode, just being great playmaker mode, um, he can really significantly change our team with his ability to pass and score. You, earlier in the year, you were talking about him being a guy that was defensively more of a stopper. Mm -hmm. and I don't think so. I think, you know, Corin is, uh, he's got um, very, very few people have innate ability. Like he's got something you can't teach, feel. Sometimes he, he, he has a tendency to gamble a little bit too much. Um, now it goes back to, you know, when to, you know, when to do it, when not to do it. And I, that goes back to the discipline defensively. Really good on the ball. Struggles a little bit off the ball. That's where his improvement. But on the ball, he's as good as anybody. And we always tell him, you know, at this level, when you're playing against somebody like you, you know, you, you, KJ Simpson, you go down the line, you're not just going to steal him from him. So there's going to be certain situations. I love when he gets in front of people and takes charges. Uh, he did that against Stanford. I think he took three of them. And that shows the growth. That's where I see the, you know, rather than, you know, maybe getting a foul by trying to gamble or it, we become vulnerable on defense five versus four when he tries to do something like that. And that's where I think he's really grown. We always know he can score. But he was a, you know, the, I go back to Xavier game. I go back to Gonzaga game. Some of the games that are big wins, he made huge defensive plays in those games. And so, um, you know, he just got to keep getting better. He's going to be in there. Uh, he gets in there in the first five minutes, and uh, you know he's been able to produce there. So.
Arizona, who is leading the Pac-12 in scoring offense. Is there anything this past weekend or any conference game that you're looking to that gives you confidence that you can limit them offensively? Yeah, um, I, I, you know, before we had a little bit of slippage in this last game. I think Stanford's one of the best offensive teams in the league. The way they shot the ball, I thought we were really good there. Um, Oregon State at home, uh, record won't tell you, but they're you know very good offensive team, offensive players. I thought our defense was getting better. Um, I had a little bit of slippage, so it's the consistency. You know, Arizona State is a they don't shoot the ball great, but boy, they turn you over. They're fast. Um, they're at home. They play different. They have sh tough shot makers. Uh, you know, and then you know they pose two different types of problems. Uh, Arizona's a lot bigger, more physical, uh, so it's a different type of challenge. Um, Arizona State's a lot more. They're, they're both good perimeters. They just have, you know, they're bigger. They're, you know, um, so you know, obviously, I think our whenever we go through and you know, uh, execute our defensive game plan. We've been successful. And uh, even in the last game, you know, rebounding was a big part. We didn't, it was the first time in four games that we got out rebounded. Uh, transition points, they got 14 points. In our wins, we were holding teams in transition to six points a game in transition. In our losses, 12, they had 14. So there was some slippage there. Those are things that we can control. But I believe our, our, you know, our defense hasn't been the greatest, but I think it's getting better. And obviously, those two teams pose a lot of challenges. Arizona being one of the best offensive teams. Uh, Arizona State, just different challenge. You know, you know most matchups you would like to run and get out and kind of use your speed. Can you do that against ASU? I think so. Um, you know, ASU was a, a it was one of the games where our keys we didn't win our keys, but we made 13 three-pointers, which that disguises, you know, a lot of those things. But, um, you know, you can't depend on that all the time, as we've seen. You know, it, it needs to be uh, against them. You can't turn it over because turnovers equal touchdowns for them. That's And that's how they get their crowd involved. And then, uh, you know, uh, you got to get back in transition. They try to play exceptionally fast. I think they're the fourth fastest tempo in our league, and we're fifth. So it's like we play fast, and so it's like, geez, they try to play faster than us. Frankie Collins is as good as guard there is in the league. Um, when they score, I think, and when they won five in a row, they were scoring 74, 75 points a game. In their losses, they've been under 70. So defense is going to be a part. You can't. They scored 37 points off points off turnovers and fast breaks in our game. 37 of their 68. But the last time you faced them, they only scored 67. And that second half, you really kind of ran away from them. What happened in that second half? We made shots. But, but they only scored 67? Yeah. No, and again, and, and I, I with 37 of those points. Now, again, some of the fast break points can also be points off turnovers, depending on how the statistician writes it. but. The point is, is if, if you can do a better job in that and they have to play in your half court, you're going to have a better chance to hold them under that 70, you know, which is going to be a big part of it. And that's where our defense needs to be tightened up. We've been working on our transition. We've, you know, working on our matchups uh, because they have a, you know, uh, Coach Hurley gives them a lot of their, they don't turn it over because they get shots and they have guys that are fearless and guys that have this, the, you can't look at their numbers and say, well, he only shoots 29% from the three-point line because in the other game he made was five for seven and had 27 points. They have you know, certain guys on their team that have the, have the ability to explode offensively. It just hasn't been the consistency that I'm sure Coach Hurley would want, but dangerous team. I think so. I think, like, you know, we had nine turnovers in our last game. Saw so had five of them. So I think overall we've been good. I think, you know, it goes back to Saw sometimes. And he, he a lot of his turnovers, if you watch, are him trying to make the extra pass to somebody. So it's not like dribbling off your foot. Or, and sometimes 
taking the responsibility, trying maybe trying to do too much. And so that trust factor of getting off the ball, hit singles, move the ball. Um, but last year, if we said we had nine turnovers in a game, we'd be like, whoa, yes. And so, you know, maybe some of the timely ones uh, haven't been great. But for the most part, you know, you just you just try to improve that area. You know, you want more shots than your opponent. You want more possessions than your opponent. Doesn't mean you're going to make them, but it leaves you get an opportunity to. How do you strike that balance of some severe, maybe on the, some of those extra passes where you just do have the turnovers, limiting that without kind of stifling this creativity on offense and making those success? You know, we wouldn't have been averaging 82 or 81 point whatever points per game without Sa. And uh, you got to let him be him. And now it just goes back to him being a little bit more responsible with the ball and valuing it. Sometimes it could be from fatigue, and that's where I have to do a better job of getting him in and out of the game. Sometimes it's allowing somebody else to dribble the ball and handle the ball because we're asking a lot of them. We're asking them to defend the ball, run 90% of our offense, uh, call the plays and echo it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of responsibility with that. Um, but, you know, it just goes back to, you know, we're always looking for our perfect game. And I think it was against Stanford. He had 10 assists, no turn or Utah 10 assists, no turnovers. Um, the last five games, he's it's been higher than what we want, and uh, higher than his standard too. So, you know, hit singles. You mentioned after the Cal game that you thought you came out with all the energy that you like to see. That's happened a couple of times this year. Stanford. I go back to, you know, you try to look at warm-ups. You try to, are we putting too much energy there? Are we not? Um, Stanford, we're down 16 to 8. I just, it wasn't, it's a feeling that you have, you know, when you're playing, you know, that you go out and you can, as a coach, it's like, you know how the player's like, I'm playing hard. And you're like, no, you're not, because I've seen them play harder <laughs> in certain situations, but sometimes they don't recognize it. So it's like timeout, you know, we're down 18 to six against Stanford. It looks like we're lethargic. We look like we're in mud. And I'm a big, it's all about energy for me. And I felt like we didn't get down 16 to eight. We were actually winning. It just, the energy felt the same. And, and that's, you know, again, if I knew what it was, you know, you talk to the guys, are we getting enough rest? How are we living outside of, of here? Um, are we taking care of our bodies? Um, and it's not just necessarily, Kim, everybody talks about like physical fatigue. A lot of it's mental fatigue. You know, it's a long season, you're in school, a lot of these kids have a lot of things that are happening outside in their life. They put a lot of pressure on themselves. If you're a fifth year senior, you're thinking, what's next? There's five weeks left in my... And so a lot of things that people on the outside don't see some people have family issues. Some people have this and that. It's, it's it's the human side that's kind of like behind the cover that you know um, that happens. But I that goes back to why I think this, the mindset is so important and the urgency is so important. But easy to say, hard to do. At this time of the year, though, are you practicing that much? I mean. We, it, it, Especially a team that you've already played. I think a big thing is is it, it just goes back to what Kim has said. He says, have you figured the energy? You need energy to do anything in life. When you have rest and great energy, right, you can accomplish anything. When you're not, bad decision making, you know. You know and so, you know, we, we go an hour. Uh, they still lift. They, they go. You know, we get a focused... Um, in, a, in an unfocused world, that's another thing that I wish I could figure out. <laughs> How can I get him to throw away life just for two hours, you know, and, and focus and, and be here? But it's the challenge, you know, it's the, it's, it's, those are the challenges. It's, uh, you know, it's, you know, understanding your people, motivating your people, inspiring your people. And uh, you do the best job you can. It's, it's got to be frustrating to know that you Yeah. Is there a chance we're gonna see him or is he shut down for the rest of the year? He's not playing. That's gonna be the first I can tell everybody. He's not playing. 
not playing this week or this He's season. not going to play the rest of the season. And like that's, is it the knee and, and like and like how and like how sound is it? Can he come back next year? Yeah, I th I think it's one of those things where practicing, doing all that stuff, feeling confident doing it, but the response wasn't what everybody else wanted in terms of the doctors and the team. And we're all about, and he probably could try to play. It's just like, you know, you, you, have, you have one body the rest of your life. Treat it like it's your temple. And if I was his parent, I'd say, no, it's just what it is. Is it career? No, 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 no. Just one of those things where you th you'd hope it would recover at a certain point, and it's just it, the reaction was not the what the reaction that we wanted, but not career ending at all. Well, will like he need any more procedures? I, I don't know right now. I just know he's doing extra training. He needs more time. You know, uh, time heals all wounds. Uh, you know, and, but not not like last year. It's not. You know, no, not that. Uh, he has a year remaining, right? He's a, he's a senior, but he I, I think he possibly has two, like, based on his uh, red shirt. Slash, you know, he could be one of those guys that, that has a Braxton, same thing. Yeah, yeah, he has time. Okay. How has he been handling an injury where, you know, you kind of feel... He wants to play. He wants to help his team. That's who he is. He doesn't want to sit on the side. You know, he's out there. He, the guy's a warrior. He wants to play. Sometimes you gotta say, "Hey, son, like you know, you know my son gets out, gets out. He's feeling a certain way, and he's like, like, 'Hey, Dad, I'm, I'm not. So, you know, the doctor says you're not allowed to lift over 50 pounds. I got it. I don't need your help. You know, he wants to do it. Wants to, wants to go out and help. But he's got to also help himself, and he's got to have people around him that have his best interest too. And we do. And uh, you know, he's not at 100 percent. No, you're not playing." And, and, and this is sort of where the like timeline. In January, he was medically clear, but it was then it was just how he felt on it. Or just how well, he early he was he was actually the timeline of the doctors was different than the timeline for him. Are you talking about when he came out and played like, originally this year? After the tweet, uh, it was it, yeah. It was, it was believed to be like that be a four to six week. Thing. Yeah. I, I don't, that's a good question, Chris. I don't have the answer to that. I, I think it was one of those things where it's not as bad. It was more of a scary deal. Uh, then it was kind of like, okay, we're going to wait this time. We're going to start doing some, you know, just like a plan. And then you start doing the plan. And the plan just isn't responding the way that you wanted the plan to go. And, uh, and that's just what it was. So I don't know the actual timeline. I wish I could tell you, but I don't, I don't know that. But that um, tweet. At SU, that wasn't any tear. No, 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 no. With such a physical team like Arizona, something that we talked about so well, and now that you know for sure you want that ring, kind of how do you game plan for that down in post? And you mentioned you're going to rebound. Yeah, you know what? We we have to be who we are. Obviously, we'll have a game plan of how you know in each one of these games, everyone's different. You know, I don't, I'm not going to get into, you know, what we're going to do or how we're going to do it. Um, but, you know, there's always a way. It's the great thing about our, you know, there's a way, you know, there's a plan, but then you have to be able to go out and execute that plan. And, uh, and we got to prepare our guys to be able to do that. But the great thing about this league is everybody has a vulnerability. Uh, everybody's had their night. And... Uh, you know, just great opportunities across the board. Um, UCLA looked dead in the water, and they go out and they win six in a row and look like the best team in the league. Uh, Washington State struggled early, and they've won however many in a row. Uh, you know, everybody has a different run at different times of the year. I felt like we were on that run and had a, had some slippage down the stretch and lost a one at home, which you know hurt. But we can't you can't feel sorry for ourselves. <laughs> You know what we've? I think the sunshine's always good, uh, but we love our Seattle sunshine when we have it. Um, I will tell you, you know, we were 
you know, this year, the, one of the hardest road trips we took right after against Utah and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, Colorado, we put ourselves in position. Um, went down to Oregon's, put ourselves in position. Um, went down to, uh, you know, the Bay Area, put ourselves in position. Um, you know, it just goes back to us finishing, you know. Two completely different teams. Uh, everybody knows Coach Hurley is, like he's had as much success in the last five or six years than any other coach in our league. Uh, he had this team 4-0. and He's a fighter. His team follows him. Uh, they just lost one, uh, you know, by 35 or whatever they did for, you know, he's going to have them, you know, you're going to, you're going to go against somebody that's going to come out, you know, throwing haymakers and we got to be ready for that. And then, you know, uh, you know, Arizona is one of the best teams in the country. They're one of the number one seeds, uh, but they've been vulnerable in our league. Uh, you know, they're great at home. We've played well down there. Um, haven't got over the hump. We have early in our careers, but. You know, it's a great challenge. I'm like, I'm excited. Like, it's, you know. You got a guy that in Keon, and after tough losses, he always comes and he faces the music. Yes. He's always a pro. Love him. How much do you really need to put on Keon to finish this season? Because he seems like a great leader. You know what he is? He is, uh, he's having one of the best offensive years of any player that we've had. His efficiency, his three-point shooting, his, you know, uh, really proud of him. But we're going to go how he goes. We're going to go how him and Saad. But also he needs to understand that, and he does understand this, that it takes a team. Uh, but we know he has a, a, you know, we go to him at the end of the game, and, and he has produced all year. Um, and uh, we're going to need him to play. You know, you need your best players to be their best players to win games, especially on the road. That's just how it works. Uh, and uh, he's been pretty damn consistent. And so we need him to be great this weekend for sure. One or two more questions. Just one more. You talk about him facing the media and all that other stuff. Can you talk about his leadership? Is he a guy that, you know, I always say to take a bite out of the scruff of the neck and go, okay, hey, we're going to do it this way or call the players on the yeah, we, you know, he is, he's been great. And uh, I think it just goes back to accountability for all of us. Like if we make a mistake, you got to own it. And the way that you, if you don't have a growth mindset, you're not getting better. If you point fingers, you're not getting better. We all have to do what? You know, I, I look at the game, I should have called a timeout. Uh, we were trying to get Corn the ball at the end and saw I got it and they weren't organized and I was frustrated and I should have done what? Now, that doesn't mean that we were going to score on that play because they ended up, we turned it over. They didn't score on it. It still was a timeout. We took it out. But, you know, we all grow. And I am, I wish I would, I, after watching it, it's great to be a Monday morning quarterback. I wish I had that at the time. Should have made that call. Should have called the timeout. Got us organized. At least we would have got a shot. People would have been, you know, it doesn't mean we would have made it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> But you gotta, you know, you just gotta own it, you know. And again, we all that's that's how we're gonna grow and get better and be vulnerable and get, become closer and build trust. You know, there's five games left in these guys' careers for most of them. Let's leave everything out there on the table. Let's put it all put it all out there. You know, and so I'm excited for the opportunity. And I know a lot of people, you know, whatever this. You know, like, you know, one game at a time and we can win every game. And that's just what it is. We've proven that. Now, again, you can lose every game, <laughs> but we, you put yourself in position to win. And I, what was our record, Sam, on uh, one possession games? Uh, one six, like one and six, one and eight, like whatever, in one possession games. You know, like that's that's a foul shot here, a stop here, a rebound here, a, not a, a defense or breakdown to having four more wins and four less losses. And people are talking a different narrative. <laughs> but the biggest thing is that they believe, because we believe. Do you have any thought whatsoever um, to how welcoming an Arizona fan base is going to be, given some of the events that transpired over in the football and coaching and stuff like that? I don't know. You know, it's... Uh, 
I don't know. I, 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 I can't, I can't tell you that. I don't, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Uh, haven't thought about it. I just know it's a, there, it's two great opportunities and, uh, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks, Coach. Thank you guys.